guys and welcome to another episode of Hagen's and Beards. So, this is going to be probably one of the hardest deities slash videos I will probably ever do. This is about Hecate. Now, before I continue, always drink from your horn. So, let's begin. Now, I will use my notes for this because of the severe level of difficulty to talk about this goddess, let alone get her right. So, she is represented as the triple goddess. She is seen as being three forms merged into one. Yeah, no, three forms merged into one. She is the goddess in the Greek sense of witchcraft, herbs, poisons and medicines so she heals but she can also afflict now there's a lot of confusion with the celtic and irish god the morrigan who is a war goddess there's confusion between the two there are similarities it's very much the uh, similar to the freya and the frig dilemma we met in the norse pantheon this is a theme amongst many pantheons there are some similar goddesses and some that actually cross between now there is many um, confusions between them but I can guarantee you they are two separate deities. Her symbols are torches, now I mean torches as in the burning stick not the flashlight. Keys, now she is seen to be a keeper of keys, she is seen to be able to open many doorways and walk many paths, very similar to Tyr. She is the protector of the household, so people who offer to her, especially in the ancient Greek times, I'm not too sure about the modern times, it's very hard to find devoted followers of Hecate. Correct followers of Hecate, may I add. Uh, so she's the protector of, of the household, so she basically, um, that doesn't mean she makes sure that your radio doesn't get stolen, that basically means that she looks after the people that dwell within your home and makes sure that the family unit is kept. She has actually got a cult. Now, the word cult in modern terms would inst instigate a bad thing. But back then, a cult is just a group of people that just followed one particular thing and actually went down a particular set of rules and path to actually follow that same reason. Now, the reason why it's such a hard goddess to study is because she is mentioned everywhere. And I mean everywhere. There is an Egyptian mention. There is a pre-civilization mention. There is Roman mention. There is Norse mention. And she is said to believe one in the same with the goddess Hel, um, which I've covered in my, God, in my Hel video. Um, she is mentioned in the Wiccan. She is mentioned in the Celts. She is mentioned in just about every single form. There is also speculation that she is also the Virgin Mary in the Christian beliefs. Now, whether this is entirely true is up to the bit, but she is everywhere, which is such a difficult thing to try and pinpoint. Um, many of my friends who I know, and many people who I know that actually follow Hecate, actually um, follow her, but from different different um, paths and different religions. So I've got people who are Celts who would come up to me and say, I follow Hecate. I've got people who are Wiccan, people who are Norse, people who are Greek, or follow them paths, or coming to me and saying that what they follow. Now, they're, um, they're basically following the same thing. She is essentially the goddess of shadows and ghosts. Now, I don't mean ghosts as in spirits, I mean ghost as in like she disappears and reappears in many different pantheons. She is everywhere. Now, from what I know to offer to Hecate, now, sorry, I say Hecate, Hecate is um, the way I speak, unfortunately. Um, is to offer things to her three selves. So she's often seen to represent the fates in the Greek pantheon, the norns in the um, Norse pantheon, and a lot of the weavers of faiths in either pantheons. So she has the past, present and future selves. So you offer to all them three things. You offer time. Time is a great way to offer to Hecate. Meditation is a great way to offer. Herbs is a very good way. All these things, all the things that she is got the goddess of, offer in return. In the Greek pantheon, basically, if you are a goddess of something, and you offer something that represents that, 
that's basically the general rule of thumb within the Greek pantheon. It's a very quick video, guys. It's very hard to get information portrayed across accurately before this goddess. I don't want to portray any false information or I don't want to lead you down the wrong path on this goddess. Um, if anybody, please, and I mean it, if anybody has any further information, drop it in the comments. Find me on Facebook. If anybody thinks what I've said is incorrect, tell me why. Um, please, please, keep this going, guys. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, skull.